So this is um, Matt P with Serato, and I'm going to show you guys real quick a little few things about uh, the new 1.9.6 update. This is in beta currently, and I'm going to show you guys the new features, anti-drift, pitch play, and DVS sync um, right now. So you find that under the CD vinyl tab, you have to be using vinyl of course, it wouldn't make any sense otherwise. Anti-drift is very, very straightforward, all you have to do is turn it on in the CD vinyl tab, and once you've done that, you put your needle on the record, I'll put up a song here real quick, just so we can see what's happening. Alright. Put the needle on the record, and typically you'll see here, this tempo will fluctuate a little bit um, between on the point, the decimal point there. Now eventually that stabilizes out, and you'll see here it's locked in now at 56.3. If I move that up, of course, it'll readjust, and then it'll also be lock sol rock solid at whatever tempo it found itself at. So now it is 61. It doesn't matter what you do with the platter, it doesn't you know, need to be recalibrated once it's been calibrated there. So that's really great and really helpful. Let's do that with the other side now. Load up this one over here. Same principle again, put the needle on the record. And you'll see that it fluctuates for a little bit and then it steadies out. Right there. 1023, let's put it down to its original tempo now. Put quartz lock on, and you'll see it steady at. Should be 100. Yeah, 100. So that's locked in and ready and, and just how you want it. So um, now you've got those sorted out. That's kind of anti drift taken care of. Not really much to truly really talk about there. Um, once you've got that done, though, it does allow you to have your DBS sync working a bit more efficiently. Now, DBS sync. Previously, when you put two uh, songs in sync on turntables, if you adjust the pitch of one of them, then it would fall out of sync, and you know it wouldn't matter how many times you press sync; it would still you'd have to keep pressing it again for them to lock in. Um, and that was just a just a you know kind of a limitation at the time. But whereas on a controller, if you moved the pitch fader on a controller, and you had two decks in sync, that one pitch fader would control both turn both decks and allow you to sync and make cool transitions. Now that has happened with DVS, now you can start using that. So, all you have to do is make sure you have sync enabled in the DJ preferences. Simple sync I've got on. I don't even have beat grids on mine. Mine's just simple sync right here. It's really straightforward. So, to use sync, you just press sync on the track that you want to sync from. Sorry, sync to. So, I'm going to have this one playing. I'm going to activate the loop. And now I'm going to press sync on the right deck to match this tempo. So you'll see this one go from 100 up to 120. Now I can just drop this in. And now they're in sync. You can see here that perfectly in sync. If it's not perfect, just press this again. Now you got to press that on beat, of course. One of the cool things now is, though, if I want to um, adjust the tempo of either of them, I just have to use one of the pitch faders. So let me use this one here, on the left. And you'll notice that both tempos are going up. And I can move it back down. If I want to go down on this side, I can go down on this side as well. I like how that sounds, it sounds pretty good. Now, with DBS Sync, this also now works with the, um, the, uh, the sampler. So, some people, I've shown them that you can just drag a, a, a loop into the sampler and it'll continue to play, which is pretty cool. So in this case, I'll take this, how about now, loop, and I'll just drag it into the sampler. You can hear it phasing. And that's because it's now coming out the sampler volume on the mixer. So now I can eject that. You can see it's playing. If I bring this up again, it's still going to be in time.
again, I can move the pitch. And you'll notice when I move the pitch, everything is synced, of course. And now I'm happy with that, so I'll just drag this and I'll put it into the sampler as well. I got control on the sampler volume here, which is kind of nice. Now I'm going to pull up an acapella. Now I can start mixing this in. First of all, I've got to make sure I press sync on this one to make sure it's in the same tempo. Anytime I move any of the pitch, it's all in time. I'll load up another song, mix it in. I can always adjust the, the sampler here. go. That's um, pretty much the way you can use DVS Sync really easily and make some pretty cool things happen. Um, once you've done that, of course, you're probably pretty happy with the way things go. Um, you can probably figure out some cool ways to use it. And the other, other real big major thing that we put in here, like I said earlier, was pitch play. And that's uh, pretty straightforward as well. Um, so if I was to use, I'll close a sampler and I want to get into this pitch play mode. And I'm just going to set a few more cue points here because uh, it's important to show you that it works on a couple of different cues. All right, so you get the idea. I got a couple of different cues here. Now, to get into this, you have to press sampler and then sample long mode again. So now that has turned you turned it green and you can see that there's a, a white cue and if you press the cues it goes up and down. Now what well that sounds like is this. Oh. the idea you've got one cube and it's just going across uh, the eight pads. Now you can also um, choose if you don't want that pad you can just press the shift button and it'll light up which cue you want to you want to choose. So let's say I choose this one. So now that one will be the one. And these will change where it starts from. So that's uh, pitch play, that's DVS sync, and that is anti-drift. 
Um, that's just kind of for you guys. We're going to have probably official videos coming soon, so check for those. This is just kind of one for the homies. All right. Thank you.